Throughout the history of video games, there have been fewer fan bases as spoiled as those of basketball games. From the fun and exciting NBA Street Series to the powerhouse that is NBA 2K, basketball games sure have seen their fair share of gems. Unfortunately, everyone only wants to seem to remember the great games, but why not ruin everyone's day by bringing up some of the worst pieces of garbage games ever created? We're talking about games so bad that they became the jokes of a genre. Titles that made you feel like you'd rather go play in a busy intersection instead of spending just five more minutes with the game. Oh, we know it's going to get brought up, so let's just get this out of the way now. We didn't include Michael Jordan, Chaos in the Windy City, or Shaq Fu in this list solely because they weren't presented nor supposed to be viewed as sports games or basketball games. Anyway, let's get going with the top 10 worst basketball games ever made. But before we begin, be sure to subscribe to Sports Gamers Online for more great content, and don't forget to hit that bell to be notified every time a new video goes live. Back in the 1990s, with the switch to 3D graphics by almost every developer, games had looked better than ever. And while it's easy to say that most of the games from then didn't hold up well visually because of the improvement in technology, some were terrible even for their time. Enter NBA in the Zone 98. Everything looked blurred and distorted in some way, shape, or form, which would give players like myself headaches after just a short time with the game. But if you were able to overlook the visual issues, then the gameplay was sure to push you away soon after. It was a hard game to control on the court, and the AI rarely missed their shots. If you weren't perfect on the court, you weren't winning the game. Even though more titles came out after it, you can say that it was the game that began the death of Konami's involvement with basketball games. With the importance of Pat Riley to the game of basketball, it's hard to believe he'd license himself to this abomination of a game. With nothing but eight generic teams with just five players on each roster due to no NBA license, Pat Riley basketball need to rely on great gameplay to make it worthwhile. Unfortunately, it didn't have that either. The game basically forced every player to run down the court and attempt a dunk just to score any points. Jump shots were as inconsistent as anything else in the game, and for some reason the developers thought it'd be a good idea to have a cutscene play on nearly every shot taken. Go on a three! It's really the only enjoyable thing from this game, and I use enjoyable very lightly. Filled with glitches, Double Dribble was a game that just was too easy to play once you learned how to exploit it. And because the NES was still pretty new at the time of the game's release, programming for it wasn't mastered by many. Thus, the console would struggle to render the sprites in the game. This led to seizure-inducing flickers of the players, or just flat-out disappearing players at times. Seriously, the only enjoyment this game gave to anybody is that video and Family Guy of Peter playing Cleveland with Joe and Quagmire commentating in the background. Ever want to play a street ball game where you only get to choose from three characters like you're playing Streets of Rage? No? Well that's too bad because we have just the game for you! Jammit was a game that offered no redeeming value at all for players due to the lack of players and piss poor gameplay. Every time, and I mean every single time, that you tried to attempt any sort of shot near the basket, an animation would trigger that left you screwing up the rest of your shot. If you tried to put the rebound right back up, guess what? That's right, the animation would happen all over again. To top it off, if a foul occurred, you had to actually pause the game and call it yourself. Talk about stupid. Continuing with the stupid, next up is Rap Jam Volume 1, a game that allowed you to play basketball as one of your favorite rap stars. Choose from the likes of Flava Flav, Naughty by Nature, LL Cool J, Coolio, and even Queen Latifah, and take it right to the ugliest courts in the world for some no-holds-barred street ball. With no fouls and the ability to throw elbows, this game made you want to have someone throw elbows at your head so you didn't have to remember ever playing it. The games were one-on-one -on -one and took place on a full basketball court. The characters? Well, they didn't resemble their hip-hop counterparts in the slightest, and there were only two modes available to play, exhibition and tournament mode. You know, in case you wanted to play more than one minute of this piece of garbage. But the funniest thing is the fact that they named this Rat Jam Volume 1, as if to think a second one would ever come out. 
You know what sounds fun? Playing a game of basketball with the only options of players being Larry Bird or Michael Jordan. Luckily, we got that in Jordan vs. Bird one-on-one. -on -one. How original. This game only gave you the option of playing mini-games rather than actual full games of basketball. You could play a one-on-one -on -one game, use Jordan in a slam dunk contest, or you can have a three-point shootout using only Bird. On the court, the players felt like they were sliding on ice, and the gameplay often left you questioning how certain shots went in while others missed. The game just felt like a lazy cash grab based on the superstar status of the two players more than anything else. It's still surprising to see that EA was behind this game back in the day. Or is it? This game was pretty weird. The idea of a futuristic basketball game sounds pretty interesting, but the way Hudson Soft developed Bill Lambeer's combat basketball threw that idea completely out the window. The game took fouls out of the game and presented players with a top-down view of a court with players in suits of futuristic armor who could punch, tackle, and use weapons on their opponents. The character models looked like they were designed in the earliest days of Microsoft Paint, and the basketball looked more like a beach ball of some sort. The game had so much potential to be a fun time killer, but instead it became a game that should have just been killed at the beginning. Remember the Atari Jaguar? Well, if you do, and you were one of the unfortunate souls to own one, hopefully you didn't get stuck with this pile of junk as well. Coming out three years after the movie of the same name, White Men Can't Jump tries to capitalize on a pretty damn good movie, but fails miserably at everything other than being a laughing stock of a game. It had nothing to do with the movie itself and didn't even have the likenesses of the main characters in it. The gameplay is unresponsive and the visuals look absolutely terrible, even for mid 1990s standards. Even worse, we're seeing phrases like steel and brick and that one had to hurt showing up in the middle of the screen, blocking players from being able to see what the hell was going on in the court. At one point in gaming, digitized visuals was the next big thing in graphics. Rather than use custom sprites, developers thought it'd be cooler to just take real people and film and digitize them inside the games. While some succeeded, like Mortal Kombat, though the game wasn't fully digitized, Slam City with Scottie Pippen was the poster boy of how terrible this idea really was. Presented as a basketball game, this was more an interactive movie that had you take on the role of Ace, a street baller who was tasked with playing a number of ballers on the court before going toe to toe with Pippen himself. The game featured some of the worst acting you'd ever see, making those terrible Lifetime movies seem like Oscar worthy films. Your ball, Junior! Hey, you want some peanut butter with that jam? And the only gameplay saw you press a button in order to trigger a cutscene. Seriously, after playing this, the best thing to ever happen to gaming was the death of full motion video. That weak stuff out of here! Uh. Were you expecting something else? The worst basketball game of all time is one game that was so bad it didn't even see a full release to the public and almost killed an entire division of EA Sports. NBA Elite 11 was a game that was riddled with an unheard of amount of bugs and glitches. There were hot spots on the floor where every shot would drop, as well as an area of the court that would force players to go into a cross pose. When the team at EA Sports released the demo, it became a laughing stock in the gaming world, and it was so poorly received that people spent more time memeing and mocking the game than actually playing it. Though if you're somehow sitting on a disc copy of the game, you could be holding on to gaming gold. So at least it's got that going for it. So sports gamers, what do you think was the worst basketball video game of all time? Let us know in the comment section below and join the discussion on the official SGO forums by clicking the link on your screen or in the description below. And be sure to visit sportsgamersonline.com.